scattering parameters or S parameters describe the electrical behavior of linear electrical networks when undergoing various steady state stimuli by electrical signals. The parameters are useful for electrical engineering, electronics engineering, and communication systems design, and especially for microwave engineering. The S parameters are members of a family of similar parameters, other examples being Y parameters, Z parameters, H parameters, T parameters or ABCD parameters. They differ from these in the sense that S parameters do not use open or short circuit conditions to characterize a linear electrical network. Instead, matched loads are used. These terminations are much easier to use at high signal frequencies than open circuit and short circuit terminations. Moreover, the quantities are measured in terms of power. Many electrical properties of networks of components may be expressed using S parameters, such as gain, return loss, voltage standing wave ratio, reflection coefficient and amplifier stability. The term scattering is more common to optical engineering than RF engineering, referring to the effect observed when a plane electromagnetic wave is incident on an obstruction or passes across dissimilar dielectric media. In the context of S parameters, scattering refers to the way in which the traveling currents and voltages in a transmission line are affected when they meet of discontinuity caused by the insertion of a network into the transmission line. This is equivalent to the wave meeting an impedance differing from the line's characteristic impedance, although applicable at any frequency. S parameters are mostly used for networks operating at radio frequency and microwave frequencies where signal power and energy considerations are more easily quantified than currents and voltages. S parameters change with the measurement frequency, so frequency must be specified for any S parameter measurement stated. In addition to the characteristic impedance or system impedance, S parameters are readily represented in matrix form and obey the rules of matrix algebra. Background The first published description of S parameters was in the thesis of Witold Belovich in 1945. The name used by Belovich was repartition matrix and limited consideration to lumped element networks. The term scattering matrix was used by physicist and engineer Robert Henry Dicker in 1947 who independently developed the idea during wartime work on radar. The technique was popularized in the 1960s by Kaneyuki Kurokawa in the S-parameter approach. An electrical network is regarded as a black box containing various interconnected basic electrical circuit components or lumped elements such as resistors, capacitors, inductors and transistors, which interacts with other circuits through ports. The network is characterized by a square matrix of complex numbers called its S-parameter matrix, which can be used to calculate its response to signals applied to the ports. For the S-parameter definition, it is understood that a network may contain any components provided that the entire network behaves linearly with incident small signals. It may also include many typical communication system components or blocks such as amplifiers, attenuators, filters, couplers and equalizers provided they are also operating under linear and defined conditions. An electrical network to be described by S parameters may have any number of ports. Ports are the points at which electrical signals either enter or exit the network. Ports are usually pairs of terminals with the requirement that the current into one terminal is equal to the current leaving the other. S parameters are used at frequencies where the ports are often coaxial or waveguide connections. The S parameter matrix describing an N port network will be square of dimension N and will therefore contain elements. At the test frequency each element or S parameter is represented by a unitless complex number that represents magnitude and angle, i.e., amplitude and phase. The complex number may either be expressed in rectangular form or, more commonly, in polar form. The S parameter magnitude may be expressed in linear form or logarithmic form. 
When expressed in logarithmic form, magnitude has the dimensionless unit of decibels. The s-parameter angle is most frequently expressed in degrees but occasionally in radians. Any s-parameter may be displayed graphically on a polar diagram by a dot for one frequency or a locus for a range of frequencies. If it applies to one port only, it may be displayed on an impedance or admittance Smith chart normalized to the system impedance. The Smith chart allows simple conversion between the parameter, equivalent to the voltage reflection coefficient and the associated impedance seen at that port. The following information must be defined when specifying a set of S parameters. The frequency, the characteristic impedance, the allocation of port numbers, conditions which may affect the network, such as temperature, control voltage, and bias current, where applicable, the general S parameter matrix. Definition for a generic multiport network, the ports are numbered from 1 to n, where n is the total number of ports. For port n, the associated S parameter definition is in terms of incident and reflected power waves, and respectively. Kurokawa defines the incident power wave for each port as and the reflected wave for each port is defined as where is the diagonal matrix of the complex reference impedance for each port is the elementwise complex conjugative and are respectively the column vectors of the voltages and currents at each port and sometimes it is useful to assume that the reference impedance is the same for all ports in which case the definitions of the incident and reflected waves may be simplified to and for all ports the reflected power waves may be defined in terms of the S parameter matrix and the incident power waves by the following matrix equation, where S is an NXN matrix the elements of which can be indexed using conventional matrix notation. Reciprocity A network will be reciprocal if it is passive and it contains only reciprocal materials that influence the transmitted signal. For example, attenuators, cables, splitters and combiners are all reciprocal networks and in each case, all the S-parameter matrix will be equal to its transpose. Networks which include non-reciprocal materials in the transmission medium such as those containing magnetically biased ferrite components will be non-reciprocal. An amplifier is another example of a non-reciprocal network. An interesting property of three-port networks, however, is that they cannot be simultaneously reciprocal, loss-free, and perfectly matched. Lossless networks A lossless network is one which does not dissipate any power, or the sum of the incident powers at all ports is equal to the sum of the reflected powers at all ports. This implies that the S-parameter matrix is unitary, that is, where is the conjugate transpose of an is the identity matrix. Lossy networks A lossy passive network is one in which the sum of the incident powers at all ports is greater than the sum of the reflected powers at all ports. It therefore dissipates power, or, in this case, and is positive definite. Two-port S-parameters The S-parameter matrix for the two-port network is probably the most commonly used and serves as the basic building block for generating the higher order matrices for larger networks. In this case the relationship between the reflected incident power waves and the S-parameter matrix is given by expanding the matrices into equations gives and each equation gives the relationship between the reflected and incident power waves at each of the network ports 1 and 2 in terms of the network's individual S parameters and if one considers an incident power wave at port 1 or port 2 then by the maximum power transfer theorem will be totally absorbed making equal to 0 Therefore, defining the incident voltage waves as and with the reflected waves being and, and, similarly, if port 1 is terminated in the system impedance then becomes zero, giving and the two port S parameters have the following generic descriptions. Is the input port voltage reflection coefficient is the reverse voltage gain is the forward voltage gain is the output port voltage reflection coefficient. If, instead of defining the voltage wave direction relative to each port, 
they are defined by their absolute direction as forward and reverse waves then in. The S parameters then take on a more intuitive meaning such as the forward voltage gain being defined by the ratio of the forward voltages. S parameter, properties of two port networks. An amplifier operating under linear conditions is a good example of a non-reciprocal network and a matched attenuator is an example of a reciprocal network. In the following cases we will assume that the input and output connections are supports 1 and 2 respectively which is the most common convention. The nominal system impedance, frequency and any other factors which may influence the device, such as temperature, must also be specified. Complex linear gain The complex linear gain G is given by, that is simply the voltage gain, as a linear ratio of the output voltage divided by the input voltage, all values expressed as complex quantities. Scalar linear gain The scalar linear gain is given by, that is simply the scalar voltage gain, as a linear ratio of the output voltage and the input voltage. As this is a scalar quantity, the phase is not relevant in this case. Scalar logarithmic gain The scalar logarithmic expression for gain is dB. This is more commonly used than scalar linear gain and a positive quantity is normally understood as simply a gain. A negative quantity can be expressed as a negative gain, or more usually as a loss equivalent to its magnitude in dB. For example, a 10 meters length of cable may have a gain of 1 decibel at 100 megahertz or a loss of 1 decibel at 100 megahertz. Insertion loss in case the two measurement ports use the same reference impedance. The insertion loss is the magnitude of the transmission coefficient, S21, expressed in decibels. It is thus given by dB. It is the extra loss produced by the introduction of the device under test between the two reference planes of the measurement. Notice that the extra loss can be introduced by intrinsic loss in the DUTN or mismatch. In case of extra loss, the insertion loss is defined to be positive. The negative of insertion loss expressed in decibels is defined as insertion gain. Input return loss Input return loss can be thought of as a measure of how close the actual input impedance of the network is to the nominal system. Impedance value Input return loss expressed in decibels is given by dB. Note that for passive two-port networks in which S11 1, it follows that return loss is a non-negative quantity, RLI and 0. Also note that somewhat confusingly, return loss is sometimes used as the negative of the quantity defined above, but this usage is, strictly speaking, incorrect based on the definition of loss. Output return loss The output return loss has a similar definition to the input return loss but applies to the output port instead of the input port. It is given by dB. Reverse gain and reverse isolation The scalar logarithmic expression for reverse gain in which case it becomes a positive quantity equal to the magnitude of and the expression becomes dB. Voltage reflection coefficient The voltage reflection coefficient at the input port are equivalent to and respectively, so and, as in are complex quantities, so are in. Voltage reflection coefficients are complex quantities and may be graphically represented on polar diagrams or Smith charts. See also the reflection coefficient article. Voltage standing wave ratio The voltage standing wave ratio at a port, represented by the lower case. S is a similar measure of port match to return loss but is a scalar linear quantity. The ratio of the standing wave maximum voltage to the standing wave minimum voltage. It therefore relates to the magnitude of the voltage reflection coefficient and hence to the magnitude of either for the input port or for the output port. At the input port, the VSWR is given by this is correct for reflection coefficients with a magnitude no greater than unity, which is usually the case.
A reflection coefficient with a magnitude greater than unity, such as in a tunnel diode amplifier, will result in a negative value for this expression. VSWR, however, from its definition, is always positive. A more correct expression for port K of a multiport is 4 port S parameters. 4 port S parameters are used to characterize 4 port networks. They include information regarding the reflected and incident power waves between the four ports of the network. They are commonly used to analyze a pair of coupled transmission lines to determine the amount of crosstalk between them. If they are driven by two separate single-ended signals, or the reflected and incident power of a differential signal driven across them, many specifications of high-speed differential signals define a communication channel in terms of the four port S parameters. For example the 10 gigabit attachment unit interface, SATA, PCIX, and InfiniBand systems. 4 port mixed mode S parameters 4 port mixed mode S parameters characterize a 4 port network in terms of the response of the network to common mode and differential stimulus signals. The following table displays the four-port mixed-mode S parameters. Note the format of the parameter notation SCIAB, where S stands for scattering parameter or S parameter, X is the response mode, Y is the stimulus mode, A is the response port and B is the stimulus port. This is the typical nomenclature for scattering parameters. The first quadrant is defined as the upper left four parameters describing the differential stimulus and differential response characteristics of the device under test. This is the actual mode of operation for most high-speed differential interconnects and is the quadrant that receives the most attention. It includes input differential return loss, input differential insertion loss, Output differential return loss and output differential insertion loss. Some benefits of differential signal processing are reduced electromagnetic interference susceptibility, reduction in electromagnetic radiation from balanced differential circuit, even order differential distortion products transform to common mode signals. Factor of 2 increase in voltage level relative to single-ended, rejection to common mode supply and ground noise encoding onto differential signal. The second and third quadrants are the upper right and lower left four parameters, respectively. These are also referred to as the cross-mode quadrants. This is because they fully characterize any mode conversion occurring in the device under test. Whether it is common to differential SDCAB conversion or differential to common SCDAB conversion, understanding mode conversion is very helpful when trying to optimize the design of interconnects for gigabit data throughput. The fourth quadrant is the lower right four parameters and describes the performance characteristics of the common mode signal SCCAB propagating through the device under test. For a properly designed SDDAB differential device there should be minimal common mode output SCCAB. However, the fourth quadrant common mode response data is a measure of common mode transmission response and used in a ratio with the differential transmission response to determine the network common mode rejection. This common mode rejection is an important benefit of differential signal processing and can be reduced to 1 in some differential circuit implementations.